Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear colleagues, I apologize for rising without having advised you. It's just that I will be unable to do so on Thursday, so I decided to do it today. I rise for th third reading of Bill C-228, which is an, an act to amend the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, the Company's Creditors Arrangement Act, and the Pension Benefits Standards Act 1985. Bill C-228 aims to offer better protection for those receiving uh, pension pensions. The insolvability of these regimes must it goes through three things. First of all, before each chamber of the parliament, it would oblige the tabling with the, the superintendent of financial institutions our insolvency reports for federal pension plans. Then the bill has a mechanism, proposes a mechanism for transferring money without uh, tax, without an impact on a person's taxes until the insolvency issue is addressed. Both elements allow for a supervision and oversight of insolvency and the use of corrective measures if need. Thirdly, in the case of insolvency, or of bankruptcy rather, it, the beneficiaries are better protected in, in, in case of un, insufficient capitalization. In such a case, pensions would be mailed to the beneficiaries before the before other people who would have right, such rights. I would like to thank it's the sponsor of this bill, Senator Wells, as well as the spokesperson, Senator Yusuf. At third reading, I am pleased to tell it, I was pleased to see how quickly it went through the chambers. Most of the stages went to the legislative stages were, went through where, uh, uh, with speed and more effectiveness. This is an unequal impact and for, for pension plans that were imprudently managed. There were other bills over the last 20 years that sought to achieve the same goals. The crying need to find solutions to this problem were emphasized several times. Several Canadians con continue to suffer from the loss of their retirement income because determined benefits pensions to which they had paid into were insufficient to capital uh, had insufficient capital to protect for its employees for example the insolvency of nortel networks in january 2029 whereas managers paid themselves bonuses and granted themselves sums uh, per performance bonuses to their executives, as well as the failure of Sears, uh, when, uh, as the bankruptcy of Sears Canada, and the millions of dollars that were paid in dividends to shareholders a few years before Sears went bankrupt. And a new precedent was created recently when the first post secondary institution, but that was publicly funded, had, uh, was able to. Uh, protect itself in 2021. In the case of Laurentian University, the pension fund was compromised, was considerably compromised, including by eliminating indexed contributions before or after a person had left for, uh, for retirement. There needs to be a, a, the cost of uh, bankruptcy and restructuring must be more equitably uh, shared. Having no protection during bankruptcy right now, retirees are forced to accept major reductions of their uh, of the benefits they receive, uh, or face even worse consequences should the company uh, go bankrupt. It's certainly better than being at the very bottom of the list. Once again. Additional funds have to be distributed in the first place, and often during a bankruptcy, there is nothing left. During such a process, the probability of a retiree getting its share depends on how the fund has been managed to that point. Despite the progress that the bill represents for the financial security of retirees, uh, its scope is limited. My, our intention today is to broaden the scope for this bill in order to be able to pursue 
better solutions in the future. I would like to talk about the problem of of retirement funds with insufficient capitalization and regime and systems that uh, that imperil the financial security of the retirees who paid into it. This bill tries to address this problem, uh, at least for federally regulated regimes. The off the fi superintendent of financial institutions has uh, oversees such things and verifies if it's compliant to the oversight regime. Article 6 of 2, S228 confers new responsibility to the, the, finan the superintendent of financial institutions and will, who will have to report annually to Parliament and which corrective measures were taken or ordered to remedy pension plans that do not comply with the new requirements. Or, I'm pleased to see that these these uh, system these pension funds that will be un insufficiently capitalized will be better monitored. But I'm not certain this will resolve all the problems, In, given, given its scope, which is limited to uh, only federally regulated pension plans. I understand that there are legal obstacles and that there are jurisdictional problems when it comes to uh, provincial pension funds. But I believe that the issue of capitalizing the pension fund of an entity that may be going bankrupt or become insolvent means that the federal government does still have a responsibility towards uh, those who have paid into it. The appearance of Canadian Labour Congress President B. Bruski that illustrates this issue. The federal government legislated changes in response to the Sears Canada debacle, but they were woefully inadequate. This is especially frustrating since the evidence shows that many companies with underfunded pension plans could eliminate the solvency defi deficiency in their plans by allocating just a portion of their shareholder payouts to the pension plan. Many firms consciously choose to reward share shareholders and senior executives boosting the stock price rather than fully fund their pension obligations. That leaves pensioners and plan members at risk in the company if the company becomes insolvent, and, end of quote. We need to bring forward a comprehensive model to prevent the insolvency deficiency of pension funds. The issue, is, the issue of underfunded pension plan is critical, in my view, and deserves further attention. The narrow scope of the bill is also felt in other respects. While some witnesses at the Committee on Banking, Commerce and the Economy raised the possibility that a creditor order, sorry, raised the possibility that the creditor order provisions could also apply to pensions plan where registered deficits are charged to participating employers. The bill is really aimed at defined benefit plans since only the, these plans are able to develop underfunded liabilities. I would therefore like to draw, Honourable Senators, attention to the many Canadians whose pension plans are not covered by the legislation, given that less than 10 per cent of private sector workers belong to a defined benefit plan. In addition, we have seen a significant decline in these pension plans over the past 10 years, as they are often too costly and unsustainable for private sector employers. For these reasons, it would be appropriate to continue our reflection in order to study other options that would have a broader scope and that would allow for greater protection of pensioners and pension plan members. Well beyond the scope of the bill, we must also look at the financial security of seniors. There are significant disparities and inequities between Canadians with access to a defined benefit pension plan, those with access to a defined contribution pension plan, and finally, those without a registered pension plan. There are significant differences between public and private employers in the availability of defined benefit pension plan compared to a defined contribution plan. The labor shortage may change some of these trends by rebalancing the power relationships between workers and employers. This uh, is to be continued. 
Despite the limited scope of the bill, it is an improvement in the protections offered to beneficiaries of certain pension plans and an achievement that this bill has made it through almost all stages of the legislative process. So I encourage you, dear colleagues, to vote for this bill as an important first step towards a fairer pension system in Canada. Thank you for listening. Senator Mark.